So we are headed into our second article of the week. I want to briefly go over the assignment and some observations that I've made as I've graded the first articles that have come in. Just a reminder why this is so important. 95% um, of the AP exam that we'll take in May is about what you know going into the exam in terms of um, stuff <laughs> in terms of what's going on in the world. Um, how do you tell the story of that? How do you use what you know in your brain as evidence? Um, for one of the essays, it's an argument essay. They don't give you the evidence. You actually come in with whatever your brain has at that moment um, in time with whatever evidence you have. Um, and so students have um, said to me at the end of last year that they wish that they had more stuff to go into the exam with and many teachers um, with students who perform really well in the exam really swear by this assignment and i think it is valuable for that reason it's also valuable because this is how you're expected to think and write as you get into college and your career and it's valuable because the more people you meet, the more socially, um, you know, the, the more the different places you'll find yourself in socially with people of different um, backgrounds and schools and states and countries. Um, you'll go to parties. You'll you know you're you'll go to a new job or, or have a career and you want to have this information in your head the more information that you can talk about the more worldly you are the more civically engaged you are so that's what the assignment is about in a big picture um, a lot of people uh, did did a lot more than what they had to do and so I want you to view the article of the week as like by the time you've done like two or three, it becomes rote, it becomes like a memory, you build your brain muscle, um, and you begin to internalize how the writing should sound. Um, if I were you, to be honest, I would, I would probably take this as a copy. I would um, plug in exactly what it's asking me to plug in and then at the very end I would change the formatting and I would um, clear formatting and clear formatting is just gonna get all the types so that it's um, not shaded it looks good so basically plugging in um, information from the article and my thinking on the article the other way to do it is to retype it um, that's if if you have time that might be a better way to go because it will build your muscle memory around the type of language that we need to have when we write this you don't have to change the language i i le legitimately just want you to plug and play some people read three articles four articles that's amazing but you only had to read one and then um, some people wrote more than two paragraphs again amazing but you only need two so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you an example of an article of the week. And um, she or she, the, the writer or he, has the header right here. Very important that you have a link to the article. I'd also want to know the date of publication and where it was published and the author name. Um, having that header seems like a very small detail. And I will tell you right now, some professors won't read anything unless there's a header. Some supervisors won't read a report that I submit unless it's written or looks a specific way. So it seems like a little nitpicky thing, but please pay attention to these things as you move forward. Um, this student has basically, I bet if we go back and forth against this model, has basically plugged in stuff. Um, so we have the writer, um, we have the title of the publication in quotation marks. I will say one thing um, for folks, the punctuation, oh dear, sorry, the punctuation always needs to come inside of a quotation. I don't care what punctuation it is, it's always inside of the quotation. Um, okay, so she has the main, or he has the main idea. Then more specifically, this writer argues that um, the UN wants to have proof that shows that 
there's two that's, right? So I'm just making these suggestions as I go because I can't help myself, but also um, just so you know that when, after you type something, you want to go back and reread it. I say speak it out loud if there's extra words or missing words, and there like almost always is, even I mean, when I write too, you have to hear it read aloud or you have to see it from an objective standpoint so that you can fine tune it and get it ready for final publication or submission. Um, I'm just, you know, yes, he writes, comma, that's in there. And the writer takes a very short piece. Ultimately, I wanted under 10 words. Ultimately, any quote you pull, for any part of the exam needs to be six, maybe eight. Like we're talking a slice. That's actually harder than it is to take this entire long quote. But people don't want to people don't want to read the actual quotes from what you read. They want to read what you think about those quotes. So the less of the quotes, more about what you think. Um, great. He's suggesting. Okay. He firmly believes. Great. Also, using the word choice in the quote as a way of telling. So she's really getting into what he or she notices about the actual wording, which is great. And then I need to see this to conclude. I need to see that um, final conclusion because transition phrases like that are, are roadmaps for the reader so that they feel uh, comfortable reading your essay and that they feel that it's very clear. So she's going, or he's going with an agree. Um, she or he is agreeing with the writer. More specifically, they believe. For example, excellent. Um, one thing, there needs to be a universal idea somewhere in your agreement or disagreement. Um, and I am going to harp on this because um, you get into deeper analysis if you are forming it around a universal idea and not a fact. So let's just check the first couple sentences to see what that universal idea may be. I see protection here and I see security um, somewhere that I can't find now. Great. So that's the universal idea, nothing fancy, but it has to be that versus a fact. Um, then that way, when you're analyzing, you can draw that out a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to double check it against here. Um, yep, so you have therefore, and there should be something that signals a conclusion. I say here sub in transition um, to replace conclusion, and I do have this transition handout ready for you here. Um, so she or he has therefore. That's it. Um, this should get to the point where you don't spend a ton of time on this. Um, yes, I think it's going to take you 25 to 30 minutes to look at that article and decide where you stand and also to choose a quote and then also to be able to summarize. The first paragraph is about you summarizing what happened in the article specifically, right? The second paragraph is lifting up that summary and either agreeing or disagreeing with it and saying why, but your opinion comes in. So whatever you are coming to the table with um, would come out right here. Um, Please let me know if you have questions. You know where to find me. I hope that this helped a little bit and will um, advance this work. After the third time of doing this, I am going to level up the writing a little bit. So I do want you to get in the fold and get on board with submitting this by every Friday.